Uh, let's turn to the issue of pharmacy costs now because it's a very significant issue for many families. The cost of going to the doctor if you or your children are sick and then you have the cost of getting the drugs to make you better. There's very few times you'd come back from that experience with change out of €100. Euro, but there is potentially good news now on the pharmacy side. Tesco have entered the market for the first time here. Customers could benefit because Tesco are promising to increase competition to lower the prices of medication. The question is what it will mean for the independent community pharmacists that have effectively been running the business here for decades. Dara O'Loughlin is the president of the Irish Pharmacy Union. He's on the line. Good afternoon to you, Dara. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, when I read this this morning, I said, well, this is potentially great news because what we have is uh, drugs that are available in every pharmacy. We're talking small community pharmacies. We're talking the bigger pharmacies like Boots. Tesco are coming in and saying exact same drugs, no difference whatsoever. We're probably going to take the bones of 20% off them. It's a win-win for the consumer. On the face of it, it does appear to be good news for consumers. Um, it raises very particular issues for independent pharmacies, as, you, as you've said. I mean, pharmacy is a healthcare professional. Community pharmacists are embedded in their own communities, and they provide a lot more than just products. They're providing essential healthcare services. They're providing advice and support. And when people don't want to go to the doctor or can't afford to go to any other part of the healthcare service, the pharmacist has always been there to provide as much health support and advice as possible. And clearly there's a cost associated with doing all of that, although the pharmacists have never charged for it. The entry of a multinational like Tesco into any sector is always going to have very serious ramifications for smaller operators in the same area. So for that reason, I think a lot of independent pharmacists would be very, very worried today. We have 15,000 people employed in pharmacy in Ireland. Absolutely, and I can understand why they would be worried, because what we all fear is this Walmart-style approach where a big supermarket comes in, offers everything, and kills off the local Main Street where all of these independent businesses would have traded over the years. But there's a cold, hard economic reality facing families here, Dara, that the drugs are cheaper in Tesco. And what are those independent pharmacies going to do to try and uh, lower their prices now to compete? Well, independent pharmacists are already offering the best value that they can. Don't forget that three quarters of all the prescriptions that are done are done in the medical card scheme with no markup at all. So there is no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow here. The average pharmacy profit margin is only 4% once they've paid all their expenses. Pharmacists are already operating in a very, very challenging environment. Payments from the state for operating the medical card and other drug schemes have been reduced by 40% in the last two years with a massive saving to the exchequer and as a result to taxpayers there. The pharmacists are struggling. We saw another 14 pharmacies go bust just last week. The pharmacies are clearly struggling already. And this does add, so like you say, for some patients, they will see lower prices. But clearly, independent pharmacy is already struggling to survive. I'm seeing them up and down the country doing their very best to stay open, to continue to provide the highest quality service that they can, and to maintain the 15,000 jobs in the pharmacy sector already. Uh, Dr. Alona Duffy is also on the line, a GP. Uh, Dr. Duffy, good afternoon. Good afternoon. When you have someone sitting opposite you who's told they need to take something like Lipitor or they have to give Ritalin to their children or Prozac or some medication that you know is, 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 can be expensive, do you, when you're looking at them, would you say perhaps that they would be considering going to somewhere like Tesco now because it'll be cheaper and it reduces their overall cost if they don't have that medical card? I think patients are concerned, and, and rightly so, about the cost of medicines, and we are in general practice too. But I think it's easy to put the blame on the farmers and say, well, it's their markup that's doing it. They have to mark up their businesses. But the big elephant in the room is, why are our drug costs so high compared to other countries? I mean, everybody talks about going to Spain, coming back with six months of their cholesterol lowering yeah. tablets at the same price a month here. And the real, the real bugbear of this is, this is the Department of Health who have agreed on a baseline cost, a wholesale cost with the big... Uh, producers of the drugs for their importing into this country. So they agree on the cost, and that's the baseline cost that the pharmacists have to charge. So it's the cost that the, not only do the, health, the Department of Health pay for these drugs for the medical card patients, but that's the basic cost then, plus the markup that the private patient has to pay. And that's why we're finding them much cheaper in other countries. So you have to ask, why is this still going on? Why have the Department of Health not addressed this and gotten a much better deal like Spain, like even the UK, because I, I work in Monaghan, which is on the border, and basically we find 
patients going to the north. But invariably, patients do come back. They want their regular pharmacists. They like the yeah. continuity of care. And, you know, yes, it costs them more, but often we're seeing more and more patients saying, well, look, it is cheaper to go elsewhere, but I want to see my regular pharmacist who's going to give me advice about interactions of drugs and the likes of that. So much in all, we'd like to blame the pharmacist for putting this excessive markup on the product. It's not down to that entirely. So how, if Tesco are coming in, how are they getting away with charging these cheaper prices then? I think what Tesco is saying is they're just going to charge a smaller markup. They can't change the actual price of the drugs that come in. And, you know, one of the other things I think Tesco are making it sound like it's going to be easier to get access to pharmacies, easier to get access to drugs. You're still going to need a prescription for your drugs. You still have easy access to your pharmacies, as Dara said. I mean, in rural communities and small towns like Monaghan, the pharmacies are available 24-7. The shop may close at 6 or 7, but really everybody knows where the pharmacy lives. Everybody has the phone number. And if you need something in emergency, your pharmacist will always see you through that spot of bother. That's not that going to base- happen in the likes of Tesco. You're going to have young yeah. trainee farmers, well not trainee farmers, but young farmers and probably local farmers and people changing so there won't be that same person that you know each time you go in. We're joined here on News Talk by Dara Lachlan, President of the Irish Pharmacy Union and Dr Ilona Duffy. On at that point, Dara, this baseline price of medicine, are your hands effectively being tied by the government here that if you had the opportunity to sell it for less you would and you'd be able to compete more fairly with this big new um, uh, contender on the block? Well, what we have, we have long said is that the medicines coming into this country are priced at, at a higher price than they are in our nearest neighbour, the UK, or in Spain, where most people go on their holidays. But what we've advocated for years now is that pharmacists should be allowed to give patients an identical generic medicine, which is an identical medicine, but it's invariably unbranded, and as a result, it can be considerably cheaper. It offers savings to the patient without compromising on their care or treatment in any way. And there is an agreement in place between the government and the pharma industry that prohibits us from offering patients those cheaper generic medicines. Why why, why, uh, why prohibit it? You've had the opportunity. You know the drugs that are being dispensed. You know there's a cheaper version. You have to give them the one that's on the prescription still. That's correct. The government has been talking for quite some years now, since the previous Minister for Health was in office, about introducing a scheme of generic substitution. We don't see it as something that's overly complicated. We've pushed for it for a number of years and there's still no sign of it. Elona Duffy, uh, are GPs conscious of that when they're filling out a script that there is a generic out there or is it a case that they know the type of drug they want, they know the big brand or perhaps they've been given a notebook or a pen by a drugs company and that forces their decision? I think general practice in general would fully welcome the whole substitution of generics so that if you put a named drug down that, uh, that the patient should be allowed to be offered the cheapest brand of that. The, you know, whichever, whoever's going to be cheapest as long as it's the same drug. So I think everybody's hugely behind that. And the Minister for Health, again, as Dara has said, has talked about this and I think is moving ahead to bring that in. So absolutely. And that would probably bring down cost of drugs 20 to 30 percent for patients too because once they come off patent, we see the drop in price happen overnight. Uh, Darren, I'm going to have to move on, but just before I do, uh, you talk about 14 pharmacies going bust last week, not wishing to scaremonger, uh, but if Tesco, I mean, it seems to be quite an aggressive entry to the market, uh, if they start putting these pharmacies in their bigger stores, how many jobs could be at risk? There are 15,000 jobs in community pharmacy in Ireland at the moment, and I would be frightened to speculate as to how many of those jobs will be put at risk. But the UK experience has been that when Tesco rolled out pharmacies, in their superstores over there, that thousands and thousands of jobs in community pharmacy were lost in the UK and pharmacies closed down. Many towns and villages were left without any pharmacy service to the extent that the NHS then had to try and sponsor a pharmacist to go back into a loss-making situation just so that the community would have access to the care and the support and the advice that pharmacists offer. Okay, I still think people are going to vote with their wallets on this one. Darrow Lachlan, President of the Irish Pharmacy Union, and Dr. Alona Duffy from County Monaghan, thank you both for joining us on News Talk Lunchtime this afternoon.